This is Chad with the iPhone blog and today we're going to take a look at documents to go for iPad. This is a universal binary so it does run on the iPhone and the iPad which is pretty nice. So what we have over here on the bottom is we have a list of recently accessed files and you can see we do have Excel, PowerPoint, Word documents. It will even view pages, PDF, etc. but can only create and edit Word, Excel, PowerPoint, and text files. Across the top we have the search feature. So we attach search, we have an option of searching all of the document titles uh, in our folders, as well as searching just our downloaded only documents. Now the downside with that is it doesn't search the inside of the document, only the title. Local files are files that uh, a come with the information. So you can see here it has Acme documents, and you see there's a .doc and uh, a .docx, so it does handle the newer Word and Excel formats as well. And this is just here if you create something locally, it's not really saved to anything other than the, and then the uh, device. And then we have desktop files. So if you choose to synchronize with uh, the desktop, uh, this is where you can go ahead and sync up this information. And then you can also use online files. So I have my Dropbox, my um, iDisk, and Google Document accounts. So all you have to do is tap on it. It's always going to refresh the folder to see if there's anything uh, that's new or changed. So if I go over to Documents, again, it's going to check to see uh, what's here. And I can go over into Miscellaneous. And as you can see here, some documents have color and some do not. The ones that have color, I've actually touched and downloaded. You can set the local cache to whatever you want. I think the default is 100 megs. So here's a PDF as an example. Uh, and this was the PDF uh, for... Um, the iPad reservation. You can see it's actually a pretty pretty quick and pretty fast uh, PDF viewer, to be honest with you. It's uh, pretty nice. Uh, and then over here, we have a friend of mine. It's her resume. I had to try to find a miscellaneous document that was actually real to uh, work with. And as you can see here, it works uh, splendidly well. It does um, bullet points. It does everything. So if I were to place my cursor here, I get the keyboard. I can save it as something else. I can email it. I can change my fonts, font size. You can even see down here you get your options to change those things. Uh, I have uh, paragraph formatting, you know, justified, align left, align right, bulleted lists, uh, indents, hanging indents, search, bookmarks, redo, undo, all of those other types of fun things. And you can even view in portrait as well, and you still have the full keyboard, uh, which is really nice. Now, this also, oh, and here's an option, so yeah, I'm going to discard since I'm leaving. Uh, you can also go ahead and open up uh, Excel documents as well. And I don't remember if I had one, one here. Uh, but the Excel stuff is actually uh, pretty, pretty decent. Here's a, a phone list I have at work that I have in Excel. And, you know, you can pinch to zoom to make things bigger, or you can make things a lot smaller. And uh, you can tap to hold to... Uh, Resize columns, as you can see the arrows are there, so I can resize that column, make it really big. Uh, same thing here, I can make a column really big if I want, and I can tap a field, and I can insert um, a formula if I wish. Or, it has all of the standard formatting options uh, that the uh, Word document has. So if you tap this, you know, you have your bold, italics, underlines, number, formats, you can see there's text, currency, date, and time alignments and so on and so forth. And and the way you edit cells in this, because it's not as, shall we say, self-evident as documenting in a text or in a document, is you double tap and you select. And when you do that, you can then go ahead and say I want to make things bold and maybe I want to change their color. And so now you can see I've made those those things bold. And maybe we can do some more fun things with them. Uh, we can align them to the right uh, instead. You can even lock the cells, which is pretty pretty neat. You can even insert uh, rows and columns and so on and so forth. Uh, pretty slick. Uh, and then if we go back here, I don't really have a PowerPoint document that I've created, but that's why they give you those local documents to play around with. So here is a uh, DataViz company overview. Uh, and you can see here, of course, it's not really working the way I want. As you can see here, uh, it it's, uh, renders PowerPoints amazingly well. It's actually very, very good. 
And then if you wanted to uh, make some changes, uh, you can go ahead and uh, bring this up. You can go to a particular page. Uh, you can even save it as uh, something else if you like. So all of the standard kind of fanfare apply. Here's the, uh, the Acme slide. And so you can go in here, and this is where you actually create your slides. It's on this screen. And from here, you can choose if you want to indent or so on and so forth. So it's a little bit different. You can't actually uh, edit from the slide at all, which is, which is a little weird. Um, but you can certainly go uh, back and forth between your slides. So pretty neat. It does the import process pretty well from what I've uh, been able to experiment with. Uh, the one downside that uh, it doesn't seem to have is you can't add a mailbox. It says you can add a mailbox to view attachments like for Google or whatever through Exchange. However, to do that, it says to go add an account. When I add an account, you can see all it lists are the cloud types. It doesn't list anything for email. So that's a big oops in, in my opinion. Uh, you can also change what type of file format you'd like as well. Uh, that's pretty much it in a nutshell. It works great. Um, I think it's fantastic for anybody that needs to do some some mild document editing. Uh, Documents to Go's Intact Technology really does a fantastic job of keeping your formatting intact and even tells you if it's a format it can't read. It doesn't even try to render it. It just tells you, hey, I have no idea what this is, which is nice. Instead of doing a best effort, it just flat out doesn't do it. Um, so the, the one issue I had with this is that uh, for the enterprise, it doesn't have an ability to connect to a, a network drive through a VPN or any other method, only through those cloud services. So it'd be great to have an option to do that to allow a salesperson, as an example, complete, complete flexibility to get to their documents. But, you know, what can you do? Uh, in the meantime, fantastic app. I highly recommend it. Uh, this is uh, Documents to Go from Database.